Hey everyone and welcome back to the last part of our Octane for Blender series. In this series we or in this part we are going to be adding the lights and I'm going to show you how I went about the composition and then we are also going to I'm going to show you just the the render settings that I used this time. So uh, let's take a look at a few different lighting options we have within uh, within Octane. So as you can see here we have our rocks, which we um, textured in the last part. And uh, we have our wash, of course, also here. So the great thing about, like, if we start to talk about the composition, is that you can see we have four rocks here. Uh, and I'll just go into this view here. And um, as you can see, um, it's actually the same rock and then this is one of the cool thing about like 3D and about how to manipulate things. And of course, this would also apply in like in photography, but we can sort of like cheat because it looks like over here that it's not the same rock. And that's because I have intentionally placed the rocks and rotated them so that they don't look the same. And you can see if you go to a top view also, you can see over here they are a bit uh, apart here. One of two of them are right in the back, while we have the two rocks here holding our object here. And uh, the reason why these rocks and are a bit behind is because this gives some sort of like depth to the image. And um, also one of the important parts about like the compositing is. We want to make still this illusion. So even though this scene is not realistic, we have to sort of like apply the real physics, real life physics to the scene. So I've placed the rock so that this watch here is sort of like um, placed between them. Uh, so the illusion is that these rocks are holding the watch together. Uh, or in, in like not together but in place and uh, so yeah so and as you can see we have a lot of nice contrast going on so I will just show you how I recreated the light on this here um, so the important thing and I have also talked about this in other tutorials is in 3D we really want this um, you know light to shadow to light to shadow to light happening um, because this gives depth to our image. So as you can see here, we have um, darkened areas where, and then we have the lighter areas and then we have darkened areas again and light areas again. And uh, so this just creates a really dynamic and depth filled image. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll just turn off these lights here. I think one of the lights are in here also. Uh, let me just take it down here and I'll just turn everything off and also the HDRI. So as you can see right now we only have the um, watch itself and where it emits lights naturally with the uh, clock and the numbers around so we can see in dark um, so we can see watch our clock in the dark but we need some light going on here. So first of all, the first thing that I set up was I wanted to have a really cinematic, like almost space-like image because this watch is the Speedmaster and it's the official moon watch, uh, the one that they, uh, the astronaut use in space. Um, I think it's sort of like an official watch. I think it was the first watch that was on the moon at least. So, uh, so I wanted to create some sort of like cinematic light and just like in photography and film cinematic light really comes when we have shadow side on the camera closer to the camera what that means is if we have a light in the background we want a bit of shadow in the front uh, because this just gives sort of this cinematic and depth filled look so i actually let me just see what it is this is more like a frontal light, as you can see here. Um, so this is also a look that you can go after. But 
I didn't like it that much for our scene. Um, so let me just see. Yeah, this was the one. So the first light that I placed was just a an area light up top, and when I hit it, uh, hit Shift A here, and on the light I just added an octane light area light. So this is just like in cycles where we have a, a, an area light, and uh, the way that it works within octane is you go up to the shader editor and the object you choose the light, and then we have this set set up here for us. So we have our texture emission which. Um, Control the power, so you can see if I turn this one way down, we lose the power. Um, and I can turn it up and we gain a lot of power again. Um, so we can play around with these settings here. So I'll just keep it at 125 here. Um, and then we have the opacity, which controls um, like the opacity of our light in the scene. So you can see it's not affecting anything here. But when I go out and I turn it on, you can see that we see our light. So this is a really cool feature within um, Octane. It's easy to just dial down the opacity and the camera will not see our light. So I'll just go back in here. So then, I, then as you can see here, we have this sort of like space filled area here where we have sort of like lights cast and we have the shadow from the watch, we can see that on the rock, which helps sell the illusion and also up here. Um, and another light that I thought could be nice is also a backlight, but it's more like a rim light. So this is coming from behind and not from top down. So this is more sort of like a rim light hitting our watch here. And what I also did was in the beginning, I thought about like adding some sort of ambient and, uh, light to this scene. And this helps sells the realism because an HDRI, which is the one that I used here, cast uh, reflections and all of its like textures onto our scene. So the way that I set this one up was that under the world properties, I deleted everything and then I searched for a texture uh, and environment texture and then I set that in and then I actually searched for an just an IMG an RGB image and this is where I put in my um, HDRI just like in cycles and then I set the legacy camera to one um, so yeah so this is the way that it works uh, with the HDRI and um, but yeah so we can plug in our lights again and now we get this sort of like moonlight moonish like image here we can also add this one so we get even more light i actually like it uh, like it more without so we can turn this one off we can see what it looks like with the this frontal light here and this is also a nice light uh, then we have sort of like even more like light into the scene here um but in this case, I think we'll turn it off because this gives a sort of more space-like feel. And uh, then the last thing that I did was we have like a backdrop over here. And um, this is just a plane. And then I just had a light. Whoops. And then I just had a light down here, an area light that I scaled out. And as you can see, it's used to sort of like bounce into the plane here, lighting up only sort of like the back it's also hitting the rocks a bit and you know but but i don't care about that and you can play around with the strength of the background if you want it to be more subtle or you can have it like we did i did or you can turn it more or uh, you can just blow out it blow the background out and we can add the top light here this is also like a cool cool light where we really have sort of like the emission backdrop Maybe this is a bit too much so we can dial it down to like this here but i wanted to even more down so 500 is fine for me i think so as you can see here we have the light up backdrop with the nice gradient the famous gradient and uh, you could also do this in the composite of course with the uh, afterwards um 
but yeah, this is, um, you know, just a gradient. But as you can see, we have light, we have shadow, we have light, we have shadow, we have light, we have shadow, we have light, so, and shadow. So we have this depth filled image where we created depth with our lights. And what is kind of nice about this setup is that it's not really that complicated. And I don't think often it has to be that. So we only have our texture environment set very low just to give some realistic reflections. We have our top down cinematic lighting here, and we have the lighting back here, just giving us a gradient on our backdrop. So yeah, so this is all of the light settings. Uh, and I'm just using the Octane Area Light in this scene here. There are other um, light options. You could use Spotlights or Sphere Light. It's sort of like a, just a round, like a point light as we see in Cybles. But most case, this is the way that it works. And you can also apply um, AIES lights. Uh, like real life uh, lights to this one, then you just load it in here and under and set it to the to the texture. Uh, if I go oops up here to the shading, we can add a like a soft box texture. If you find that online, I know you can download those things. And I'm also using like gradient lights, but in this case, just for a start and for like a beginner friendly tutorial, this is just straight out octane area lights but no um, sort of like tweaking to them so yeah and uh, so for the render settings um, I just went with the max sample set to 500 but then under the format I went with a like a, a, a 4k image over here um, because yeah that's just the way that that I do it I don't often have that high of a sample. I really like to get more resolution into the image, making 4K images. Um, and then the, yeah, then it's this. This is just the settings. Actually, uh, I found they were worked fine for me. If you want to denoise your image, you can do that as well. So if you go into the camera option, you go down here and you enable the denoiser here, and. Uh, and then you go up into the view layer properties and under the passes, we can choose the denoise of beauty and take off the beauty here. Uh, oops, under the denoise, we can take off the beauty. And then when we render the settings, we can do the denoising in the compositing afterwards. Um, so yeah, but uh, this is all for now. This is a shorter video, I hope. So um, good luck with it and uh, hope uh, you got just a little bit out of it. So thank you and uh, see you for the next one. Bye.